Merhaba. Merhaba. Mr. Holmes, you came. Oh, how kind. Though now, of course, I realize it is because of my game, not the works on display. It needn't be one or the other. Your man's disguise was easily debunked, Mr. Vogel, but I shall admit that you planted in me the seed of curiosity. Ah, terrific. I had no doubt you'd put the pieces together. Let us call it an opening gambit before the real game begins. So, this little game of yours, what's it about? An enigma to solve. A locked area in the basement with no windows found brutally vandalized. I have no clue how it was possible. What about this intrusion? What happened? Last night, I was about to leave the gallery when I heard a noise downstairs. I went to the basement, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. It was admittedly a rudimentary inspection. It is not uncommon to get rats down there, so seeing nothing of note, I left and locked up the building. When I returned this morning, alas, I discovered that part of the exhibition had been torched, and there was no sign of the intruder. The mystery being, of course, that all the doors to the gallery were locked exactly as I left them. And the door to the basement is the only entrance? Correct. Tell me you're not intrigued. And this locked area downstairs, what exactly was it? The under gallery. It's always shut, and I'm the only one with the key. Ah, so this is your private collection, not part of the gallery. Oh, no! It's an exclusive exhibition of eccentric pieces. Only a select cadre of artists, investors and collectors are admitted. Not everyone deserves to have their eyes opened. Well, this matter is certainly within my wheelhouse. This intrusion troubles me. Please take a look around, if you're willing. The under gallery is through the door at the end. I will see what I see. You sure you don't like art, Sherry? Back home, we've got a taxidermist. He's gonna have a heart attack when he sees what I bring him. Sherry, how about some company in that dreary chamber of yours? Leave my loneliness unbroken, John. A handprint of the thing from another world. But it looks fresh, and its coal origin ruins the effect of the extra mundane. Sodden and mold-ridden. One presumes deliberately. Saturn devouring his son. A grim composition. I'm flinching in its ferocity, yet somehow beautiful. The parasites of creativity. Or just a reflection of the artist's recreational interests. Ugh, oh, sheer vandalism. Only an ignorant person could do such a thing. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a cold moustache. Cold fingerprints. I think we're looking for a man with a cold moustache. A malpal butt.
A true artist never shows an unfinished piece. Closed with a metal bolt. Footprints, size nine and a half. The left step's length is shorter than the right. It indicates that the walker was lame. Old and hasn't been used for a long time. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the hatch bolt. He accidentally pushed a shovel to the floor. Vogel heard the noise. At the sound of his approaching footsteps, the intruder hid inside the coffin. When Vogel entered the basement, he failed to notice anything strange and left without properly checking. The intruder waited until Vogel had left the caravanserai before burning the paintings in Wilde's room, but the vandalism was a cover for the theft. The pieces are not what I expected. What do you think my collection is about? Dozens of priceless works amassed simply for the sake of it and presented without care. It's not about the art, it's about excess, yes? I don't know. Well, that's absurd. Of course you know. It's your gallery. There is no one answer, no singular truth, but many filtered through the subjective mind. That forgetting, embellishing, lying machine. Besides, what's wrong with a lie if it makes life more interesting? What's wrong with a lie? It corrupts the ability of others to behave freely and rationally. Men never act freely and rationally anyway. It matters not what is or isn't in the end. The only important thing is how you feel. And I simply want to feel and consume as much as I can. Don't you? Feelings are simply one's animal ancestry trying to wrest back control of the brain. I try to avoid the distraction. You try not to feel, even in a place like this? None of it moves you? To be frank, I struggle to maintain even a wit of interest in art. But Mr. Holmes, it is joy incarnate, mankind's greatest achievement. Mankind's highest achievement above all others is objective and rational thought. I see then why you dislike art, for it means whatever you want it to. Or perhaps, Mr. Vogel, I was lying. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Mr. Vogel, my investigation has revealed that the intrusion was not merely vandalism, but theft. The limping visitor left your place with a canvas. That's very impressive. This thief was familiar with the gallery and he was sporting a limp. Do any of your clients or artists come to mind? My. Your attention to detail is remarkable, Mr. Holmes. I should introduce you to Bosch's works. Alas, I'm afraid I cannot suggest a culprit. The intruder entered the basement through the coal chute. He used a magnet to open the latch and dislodged the shovel while doing so. That's the noise you heard yesterday. When you went downstairs to investigate, he hid in the coffin. Hmm. It seems I should have checked the space more thoroughly. The fire was a clever attempt to hide a stolen painting, even if it didn't fool me. I found the remnants of an empty frame in the pile of ashes. The canvas had been removed. Do you know which paintings in the Wild Room may have interested a thief? Were any particularly expensive? Those pieces belong to a well-known artist named Boniface Mercurio. They're controversial, but not of a notably high value. There's something more, is there not? I can see it in your eyes. Hmm, indeed. There is another intriguing angle. I recently received an anonymous offer for one of Mercurio's works. The sum was more than fair, and indeed could have saved Mercurio from his artistic poverty. But he declined it. Was it a performative whim? Some artists lionize pain and hardship as if their work would be worse after a meal and a hot bath. I cannot tell. But not only did he refuse the deal, he insisted on displaying the painting in the public space. I was hoping to change his mind, but artists are a special breed of stubborn. What was depicted in the piece? Hmm, a bound woman wrapped in robes being penetrated by a red devil that stared at us, the viewer. The beast had numerous tails growing from his back, and a large crowd gathered around the pair, silently watching the orgiastic scene. Okay, well, given the nature of the other works on display, it's hard to see why that one stood out. What could possibly be its value? The evaluation of art is very subjective, Mr. Holmes. After all, art is everything. A poem, a bruise, the beads of sweat on your beloved skin. Even a masterfully solved crime. I'm not sure I see the connection. Regardless, the painting was one of a series called The Sabbath Night in Cordona. The works depict sex, violence, and other controversial acts that life, for better or worse, contains. Ah, I see. I'm not sure that you do, but that can wait for another time. So where can I find Boniface Mercurio? I know he lives somewhere in Old City, but couldn't be more specific. He's a prominent figure, so finding him shouldn't be a problem. Well, I believe I have enough to begin. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. Your gallery certainly has unexpected depths. I'm delighted to have been able to please a friend. In return, I expect you to come back with good news, or at least with a good story. Mr. Holmes, I have something for you. Mr. Holmes, I see what you're up to. Mysterious stranger pursues betrothed woman. But please, let us keep things professional. I have in my possession an envelope containing details of a special assignment for you. Tell me, are you interested? I believe I am, but to be very clear, Miss Sertle, my interest extends to the message and not to the messenger. Hmm. So he claims he's not a gal sneaker, seducing women everywhere he goes. 
Perhaps the truth is even more scandalous? Please spare me the speculation and return to the matter at hand. A gang of smugglers, the Eels, have Cordona in their clammy grip. The British Empire can abide it no longer. Mycroft insists they be disbanded. But this organization only falls with the capture of their odious leader, Friedrich Panzer. And note well, I did say capture, not kill. Inside your envelope is a map marked with the Eels' warehouses. But alas, we do not know in which Friedrich Panzer resides. Hmm. So even Mycroft has his limits. Indeed. You must be sure to identify the correct warehouse before entering. Because once one is compromised, the other's occupants will scatter. Here are all the files, and feel free to use the archive too. Again, do not enter the wrong location, nor see any harm done to Friedrich Panzer. Miss Ertl, if you're quite done with the redundant instructions, I shall get to work. Well, that's perfect. Tortured hero lashes out after rejected romance. Tomorrow's edition will be a sensation. Excuse me, young man. Where do you think you're going? Greetings, ma'am. I'm looking for the... I don't care who you're looking for. You shall not pass. No visitors allowed. I wish to buy a painting from Mr. Boniface Mercurio. Is he at home? Deary, tell me because old age has made me blind. Did someone write Information Bureau on my forehead? Because I'm not here to answer your questions. Entry is for residents only. If you aren't a resident, please leave, or I shall report you to the police. Boniface, sweetie. Is that you? Ah, old age does terrible things to one's sight. I didn't recognize you at first. How are you, Mum? I'm ashamed to admit that I've lost my key. Do you have a spare? For heaven's sake! How many times will you lose that key of yours? Of course I have a spare. You artists all live in your own little world. Please, accept my thanks. I would rather accept your rent. You promised to pay me several weeks ago, and I'm still waiting. I will pay you, I promise, very soon. You'd better do, my dear. Or else I'll just change the lock. And I won't fall for those cow eyes.
Judging by post-mortem rigidity, the body lay here for one or two days. The wound is precise. It was inflicted by a razor or a knife. Soaked in blood. It seems as if the puddle of blood was here before the rags. Could be the murder weapon. A normal kitchen knife. The blood has dried. I've heard of this style of painting. It is called expressionism. Don't look at me like that, Sherry. I will not touch that dirty floor. Red skin, tails on the back, reminds me of Verda's description of the stolen painting. Aunt May Whiskey, Brandy Bucks. Quite a collection he had here. I wonder where he got that fancy camera. Despite the overall tendency towards mess, you cannot sit with the drawer pulled out like this. Someone left it after searching. It appears the wine was truly awful. The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. Look at this, John. Isn't it our stolen demon? The photograph was not pulled out in time. Such a waste of material. The chest has been searched. Mercurio was developing photographs when the intruder snuck in. Mercurio heard him coming. While the thief was searching the chest, the painter ran towards him with a bottle in his hand. He smashed it across the thief's head. The intruder had no choice but to defend himself, and the weapon of opportunity happened to be a kitchen knife. Mercurio stepped aside to grab the painting, but the wine-blinded thief attacked Mercurio's throat. When the thief came to his senses, he saw Mercurio bleeding on the floor, he grabbed the rags and tried to bandage him, but it was too late. Why did Mercurio attempt to snatch the painting in the middle of a fight? To strike the intruder? Not with his painting, it was too important to him.
It's time for some chemical magic, John. If the intruder didn't take it, the skull should be somewhere here. Monster was actually a man. Poor girl. John, you ought to be thrilled. We are now hunting the devil himself. Uh, what were you saying, Sherry? I was too busy sketching the scene, you know? Crimes and such like, daily routine. Did you find something? A photograph. It depicts a man in a red suit with tails sprouting from his back and multiple people in masks watching the scene. It all adds up, but the act of love, it wasn't given willingly, John. It was a violation, and the girl, she was with child. Give that to me now. Did you recognize someone? No. Although the victim is not from Cordona, she is African. Look at the ritual scars on her face. Get that image out of your brain. You have to continue the investigation. I must speak to the landlady. Perhaps she saw or heard something. Sherry, you cannot tell her the truth about Mercurio. It will hurt her. John, that's illogical. Sooner or later, she will come here and discover a corpse, and I still need to talk to her. Just avoid mentioning corpse. All right, stick to the character. Tell her to call the police. I'll take that into account. And wait here. I've redrawn the people in the photograph. Now you can proceed with your investigation without those horrific details. What's wrong, dear? You look like you've seen a ghost. Mr. Mercurio is dead. Oh. Is this... Uh, is this some kind of joke, Boniface? What do you mean you're dead? I mean that Boniface won't ever pay his rent again. Oh, my dear. If you need to delay your payment for another week, that is all right. There is no need for these games. But this is the last time you hear me. It's not about payment, Ma'am. If you open Mercurio's flat, you can see the dead body for yourself. Dearie, you will not trick me into entering your flat again, do you hear? I am not Mercurio. I am investigating the theft of one of his paintings, and I chose to deceive you by disguising myself as Mercurio to get inside his flat. Very well, I'll play along. You're not Mercurio. Mercurio has died, metaphorically, or not. What else do you want? Ma'am, you're very difficult. All right, let's return to the point. Can you tell me if anyone else has recently entered the flat? 
Oh, you're talking about that limping man. I'm sorry I let him in. I was scared. And I thought maybe... Maybe he would motivate you to find money so that you would pay your rent. No offense, dear. Can you describe him? Oh, so you weren't at home. I was so certain you didn't leave your flat that day. He was of average height, had a limp and a tattoo on his neck, and he was smoking Malpal cigarettes. My husband used to smoke those. They have a horrible smell I can recognize from a mile away. Can I ask a favor? Of course, dearie. Please call the police and ask them to enter the flat, and don't look inside until they come up. What? What trouble have you stepped in this time? It really doesn't matter. Thank you, Mum. Oh, Sherry, that was close. But you did everything correctly. Now, take off your outfit. I can't let you walk around in a dead man's clothes. Could you help me? Oh, I've heard the talk. Beasts! Murderers! They're completely livid. First they come to our land, then they murder... Sir, this place is off limits to the public. Please state your business or leave, or I shall request that the police escort you out. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for a witness for a case. A private investigator? Really? Even so, you're not authorised. I can't let you in. And you are? I'm Ronald Harlow, here to handle the refugee situation on behalf of City Hall. I'm the acting supervisor here, so I have full authority here to ask you to leave or I shall order the police to detain you for trying to pass the blockade. Please, step back. What about the murder that this crowd keeps shouting about? It's mere assumption. I assure you that the situation is under the police's control. I know you want to deal with this in the right way. You are obviously a professional and a responsible person, but you clearly have never handled a situation like this before. I am handling it, Mr. Holmes. Don't question my capability here. And tell me how you do it. You can't even calm this gathered crowd, and as for the police, they're not quite managing it either, are they? You consider yourself a problem solver, but until today, you've been solving problems sitting at your desk in a dark corner of a city hall room. Here, you need a more practical approach. What are you driving at, Mr. Holmes? I can help you to handle the situation if you're truly interested in solving things quickly and quietly. And how exactly would you manage that? Simply tell the police that I'm with City Hall and I'm permitted to investigate the scene. I'll work out the rest. But, in return, I need your help finding my witness. 
She's a young refugee. She's with child or was with child recently. Look, there is indeed a dead body inside the camp. So even if the girl you are looking for is there, all the refugees are now being detained and interrogated by the police. They won't allow you to speak with her. And I can't do anything about that until the situation settles down. So it's in our mutual interest to settle it. Oh. I suppose that things are bad enough that I ought not shy away from help. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell the police to allow you to come inside. Just tell me when you're ready. Mr. Harlow, how did the refugees end up here exactly? Oh, so you're not from around here yourself? I've been away for some time, but I read the papers. Yes, this whole story has been in the papers for almost a year now. They were smuggled to Cordona on a ship from Africa. Smuggled? Then why didn't you deport them? The smugglers managed to sneak them to shore and hide them inside an abandoned warehouse. When the police raided the warehouse and found the refugees there, the ship was already gone. We aren't even certain as to which ship it was. We have busy shipping routes with other colonies these days, you see. So you decided to lock them up under a bridge? There was no other option. We're still trying to work out what to do with them. I only hope we'll find a humane solution and not put them on a raft and float them out to sea. I'm ready to take a look at the scene. All right. Go inside the camp and find Inspector Tewksbury. He's the officer investigating the scene. Tell him I sent you. Say you're an independent expert from City Hall. He'll fill in the details for you. I'll find my way with words. Thank you, Mr. Harlow. So they keep these refugees under a bridge like proverbial trolls. No wonder the people outside are so dis... Who the hell are you? How did you get in here? Mr. Ronald Harlow let me in, sir. I'm Sherlock Holmes, a surveyor of refugee affairs with City Hall. You're Inspector Tewksbury, I presume? A surveyor? What does that even mean? In short, I've been sent to conduct an extensive report on the incident for the Colonial Office, and to assess all the damage inflicted on state property. Got it. Another paper worm sent to count money and get food for archive mold. Go on, look around, but don't make yourself too at home. As if I didn't have enough problems before you appeared. Could you first tell me what happened here? What happened? People from the bridge above the camp heard a woman screaming and saw a mass of refugees attacking a man. Clearly not a refugee. When the camp guards came by, the man was floating in the sewage canal with a knife in his chest. Bam. A murder. Big news for Cordona. I'm sure. Thank you, Inspector. Did you learn anything about the dead man? The fellow looks like a thug. I've had dozens like him fished out of the sea over the past 20 years. Ever since these refugees arrived, there have been people on Cordona with bad blood in them. My best bet is that this thug had something against them too. And no clue as to his identity? He had some items on his body, but nothing to indicate who he was or where he was from. I think I should catalogue his possessions in my records. Go on. They're on the table near the body. Do you have any suspects yet? You're joking, right? I've got a whole camp full of suspects. And if you ask me, this bloke had it coming. Better bury him and forget about the whole thing. And now there's a crowd gathered at the camp, and my superiors say we must thoroughly interrogate the refugees. At least those who can understand any English. Do you believe that your superiors wish to get rid of the refugees? I think that both our superiors would rather keep the story quiet. Since that's an unaffordable luxury now, they're looking how to protect their public image. That's why I have to waste my time waiting for my people to turn every stone and befriend every refugee. And none of the refugees were harmed? One fellow was cut. He's lying over there near their... kitchen. He's in a bad way. You mentioned a woman screaming who attracted the bypassers on the bridge. Was she harmed? No, she's all right, but perhaps the whole debacle started because of her. She started wailing and the refugees stood up for the girl. And where is this young woman now? Back there in the shacks, same as the rest of the refugees. She's been questioned by my men, but she's just some refugee girl. Can't understand much English.
Here we go again. Number of hours on Cordona before stumbling upon another dead body. Zero. Hmm. Coal dust under the nails. I don't see much coal around here. A steel dirk. Sharp. A common accessory among sailors and soldiers. I'd say the blade penetrated upward, however the wound is too messy to be certain. An interesting tattoo. Does it mean something? Heavy boots, with one sole far more worn than the other. This man was limping John. A violent death. This man, limping, coal dust. I think we're on to something here, John. Ask for your assistance? The law can't help you with that. A simple leather sheath. Perfect for a dirk. One thousand pounds. A fair sum, especially considering British currency isn't very common in Cordona. Malpal, soaked with salt water. If they find out about the passage, everything will go to hell. If Nobody will know anything if you keep your bloody mouth shut. The coppers smell fishy here, Sherry. Perhaps we should sniff around in... You still here? The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I seriously doubt that. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. Police boots. 
Always happy. A heavy boot with a worn-out sole. A man's footprint. A carnelian agate beads. A traditional African adornment. The blood sprayed off the blade after the strike. No hint of blood or impact. It might have been used as an improvised weapon. The cut is deep, potentially serious if not treated immediately. He is in shock, feverish and dehydrated. Sherry, you know first aid. Surely you have a duty to help this man. You can't leave him to certain death. That will kill, not save him. The refugees have been detained and will not leave until all the circumstances are clarified. It won't do any good. I'll use it to create a solution. I can use this to stop the infection from spreading. Just washed. Better than nothing to bandage the wound. Mr. Harlow, what exactly do you do here? What are your responsibilities? What I do and what I am responsible for are two different realities, Mr. Holmes. On paper, I am in charge of the camp territory, security, provision, and the refugees in general. What I actually do most of the time is knock on every city hall door trying to obtain some funding, or at least rations for the camp. Are the police here on city hall's behalf too? They are, minus those who came here after the body was found. The governor won't let the refugees disperse into the island. So there's a significant police presence guarding the camp. Naturally, they answer directly to the police. I have some influence here, but I'm not their direct authority. Sealed shut. I doubt our man could get through these grates.
it's unlikely anyone could get in or out of the camp by water without alerting the police guards. You're not even trying, Jerry. Concentrate. So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. You still here? Inspector, I believe I can aid your investigation. I know who the dead man is and what really happened. You do? Well, good for you. But I'm afraid I'm not the one you need to share your findings with. Speak to Mr. Harlow here. He's the one responsible for settling things in the camp. You don't even care to listen? Oh, I do care. Maybe even more than I need to. But I'm only here today to lock the place up, question witnesses, and file the facts. It's sad, but coming up with conclusions is not among my tasks here. You fellows at City Hall do that. Anyway, speak to the supervisor. I'll just stand by and listen to what you have to say. Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger, but somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. You think one small clerk can make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. Help me, please. They often take us from the camp to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way to get a glimpse of freedom.
So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nela? Nela. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Naila's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Naila, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Hello, Naila. <laughs> My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice. Please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Naila, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Naila doesn't want us meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. You still here? The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck. Two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, oh, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right?
What a lovely man this Bernadotte is, eh, Sherry? Can't wait until we get to meet him. It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. Is this familiar to you? I don't have time for the... Let's find somebody else. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. That's our way in, Sherry. Hey, yo. This is private property. You lost something. Good day, sir. I've been sent by City Hall to see Mr. Bernadotti about... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You'll have three seconds to walk away, or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho! I did try to resolve this peacefully. Give him the pepper snuff. Sherry, look. This seems familiar. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't harm you. Like you didn't harm the folks on the way here? Excuse me, just one question. Sorry. We don't see much here. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch it to pieces.
Keep standing in my way, and no one will ever see you again. Righto. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. You acted so much like me. Please don't shoot me. I have a family. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk. Whenever you're ready, I'd hate to intrude. Niccolo Bernadotti, I presume? The name is Sherlock Holmes, and I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. Is that so? The man you sent to the refugee camp failed in his task. He impaled himself on his own blade. Clumsy and chaotic end. For a man who just broke onto my property, you are more businessman than brute. You have my attention, Mr. Holmes. Do not waste it. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization and thus to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. 
The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, and I am compelled to ask why you want it. Who is the man visible in the photograph? An associate? Not yet, Mr. Holmes. Though with this picture, that may change. The man in the photo is a British envoy on Cordona. What exactly do you want from him? My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home, outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy. But I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. I am positive our deal will benefit everyone. The front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it. If you want, of course.
If I give you the photograph, how do I know you will not come after me? Mr. Holmes, you are not a threat. The local authorities owe me favors. For all your confidence, you cannot actually harm me. Besides, I like you and your approach to business. We are not dissimilar. Pragmatists to a fault. Indeed, I cannot ignore the just outcomes in what you have proposed. All right, take the photograph. <laughs> you are a hard man to read, Mr. Holmes. I couldn't tell if you actually had it. Fear not. This decision will bear its fruits soon enough. One more thing, Mr. Holmes. Now that I have the photo, you may as well take Mr. Mercurio's painting back to the gallery. Please, send my apologies. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh. He's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Warren presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? Yes, it's here. Splendid. I'm most grateful, Mr. Holmes. It must have been a difficult task. Will you share your adventures with me? I cannot, Mr. Vogel. The story is much like your undergallery. Not for everyone's eyes and ears. So sometimes you do hide the truth. What has happened to your crusade? I'm not on a crusade. I simply do not owe you the story. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen to keep secrets, I'll respect it. Besides, the truth is often more boring than the mystery. No? It is what it is, Mr. Vogel. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I had hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Mm -hmm.